Good morning, friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage. Upcycle with Decoupage is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, several online bookstores, and it is available on my website. The link to my website is right below this video in the description box, and the napkins are available as of today on my website. So just go on to that link below. That seems to be my most common question. Where do you get your napkins? And I get them from my website. And for today, I'm going to show you how to take one of those paper mache hearts and do a transfer over it. Then add some decoupage. We'll do a little bit of a crackle finish. And I've got some glitter on this just because I love glitter. And whether you're celebrating Valentine's Day with someone or not, you can make this for yourself. And it's a beautiful little hopeful heart. It's not so little, it's about 12 inches tall <laughs> to keep around your home. And I'll show you how we can get this started. The first thing you want to do is take your paper mache heart and cover it in chalk paint. Now I'm recommending chalk paint specifically for this project because it's a very porous surface. It will hold the transfer very well. And it's also going to help us in this next step, which is doing our transfer. This is just the generic brand of Elmer's glue, any white craft glue. But you do wanna make sure the craft glue is non-yellowing or that it says acid free. When this turns to a yellow color, it is not the attractive aged look yellow. It kind of turns to a dingy yellow and it, it just doesn't look appealing on your work. So you do want to make sure you find something that says it's acid free or that it is non-yellowing. And I'm just going to cover this whole surface in this white craft glue and a rule to keep in mind is the thicker the glue the larger the cracks and the thinner the coat of glue the smaller the cracks now you can see on this paper mache heart there's a little bit of bubbling going on and that's because it's the surface that we're working on but this will all work out in the end when it's dry so i'm using a chip brush as you can see here and you want to get in the habit over uh, most of these steps you've got to have a cup of hot soapy water right next to your work and put the brush in there as soon as you're done otherwise you'll end up ruining the brush it's really hard to get that glue off if it dries or gets tacky now you may have wanted to paint the base color a little bit darker because of the look I'm going for, I painted my base coat first white. I added the glue. Now, while this glue is still wet, I'm taking a little bit darker of a coat of paint, same chalk paint, and I'm just adding a tiny bit of a darker color that I don't want to mix too well. And you want to use a pouncer brush like you would use for stencils, a sponge pouncing brush and go all over the wet glue. Pounce everywhere 
and cover that whole surface. Now you can see this almost looks like chocolate chip ice cream the way it's coming out, which is fine. I like those little dark spots in there and the paint color is uh, somewhat of a beige color. Now for more contrast, you would want to go with the very dark base color and then this lighter one over top. So I'm going to finish pouncing this second coat all over. When you're done with that, you want to right away get that glue. Uh, I'm sorry, you want to get that glue off of your brush. So put it in some hot soapy water. Now you want to take your blow dryer and you do want to blow dry this with a blow dryer. Don't let it air dry and don't use a heat gun. And I'm going in fast motion because I want you to see how quickly the cracks form on here. Don't worry about those lumps, they'll be okay. And the reason this is happening is because it takes longer for the glue underneath to dry. So the chalk paint is drying a lot faster and it's causing it to crack. And that's what you see going on here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this aside to just let the rest of it dry because now the glue underneath has to dry. The crackles will remain and you may even have more cracks form. I did put this aside to dry overnight, but you can also put it in a dry room like the bathroom with the heat on and keep the door closed and it will dry within a couple of hours so that we can move on to the next step. So for the next step, I took a printout from my computer and I just found one of my favorite quotes, let me count the ways, we all know the rest of that poem. And what I did was I covered this with just simple decoupage glue. Now you can see I flipped this image when I printed it out. You can also go over to the Graphics Fairy. Uh, you can find several things that you can print out from there and they are already reversed. They answer a lot of questions you may have about how do I print this out, how do I reverse it. Uh, or you can do what I did. I just went into my Word Perfect program and I chose a font. I chose the words. I wrote down what I wanted, printed it out. Now I'm using a laser printer. And what I'm doing is I'm covering the words with decoupage glue. And if you are using an inkjet printer, this part could run. Inkjets are not waterproof. The inkjet prints aren't waterproof. So you could either take this to a copy center and have them make a laser print for you. They have self-service centers in the copy centers where you could just make your own laser prints. Those are waterproof like this one. Now I'm using my finger here because this is a laser print and I know it won't run. If you are using an inkjet print, skip this part and you want to apply three coats of your decoupage glue over this, letting it dry between each coat. If you're using a laser print, you only need to do this one time. Add the decoupage glue over this and let it dry. Before you let it dry, there's one other step though. I just took a paper towel, I wet it, and I went in between the words because I'm not trying to wipe all of that glue away, but some of the decoupage glue away because it'll make it that much easier to remove the paper when we're done with the transfer. You don't have to do this step. I just found that it gave for a much easier time of it when I went to remove the back of this paper. So we'll put this aside to dry. Again, if you're using inkjet, you want to apply three coats of decoupage glue and wait till all of that's dry. Now everything is dry. The heart is dry, the paper is dry, and we're going to tear out just the section that we want. And we're going to just play around with it, center it, put it where we think we might want it. We might want it on an angle, you just want to make sure you put it in a place that it looks appealing to you before we do the transfer. And now what we're going to do is just apply some decoupage glue right over the section where we've decided to put our transfer. And you want to lay the transfer, which is whatever you printed out, face down. Now at first use your fingers to press this down and you can either use a brayer your fingers, or you can use the back of a spoon 
And you wanna be careful because the paper is a little soggy right now. It could tear, so just be a little bit gentle. Press everything down. And again, with either a brayer or the back of a spoon or your fingers, you wanna press all of the glue to the outside. Push all of that out. You just wanna make sure your words are all firmly down onto your surface. And again, we're going to need to let this dry. So once you've got this firmly secured, put it in a warm area to dry, but not the oven, just a very dry, warm room. And it may take a couple of hours. So you just wanna put it aside. It's okay if you leave this overnight to dry also. Now, once everything's dry, I'm taking a bowl of warm water, and this is a rough, rag that I'm using, a clean rough rag, and I'm going to remove all of this paper. What stays behind are the words that you've printed out. And you'll find the right pressure here. If you overdo it, you could pull away some of the transfer, especially with an inkjet print. But let's just remove all of this paper. And you may need to do this a couple of times. It may take a couple of tries. And if you see that you've got a little bit of the script missing like I do there on the M, that's okay. We're going to take a thin magic marker and just go over that. And now we're going to frame that transfer with our napkins. And what I'm going to do is cut these out. Do not separate the napkins yet because it will make it too hard to cut them out. One thing I want to show you, and I'll show you this in real time, you want these small scissors to cut napkins. And if you come up against a hard edge, meaning a straight line, like your pattern would have flowed smoothly if it weren't for the end of the napkin, you can still cut smaller pieces of what you're doing so that you don't have any of those hard lines. And now we're going to separate the napkins and you wanna cut enough of these so that you have enough to go around your heart. And once you're all done cutting out your napkins, before you do any decoupaging, play around with your napkins until you get them in the area that you think they're going to look the most appealing. Now for the fun part, I'm applying decoupage glue onto the surface. I'm then going to place my image or my napkin right there and I'm taking a piece of saran wrap and pulling it tight and placing it down over the napkin. That will remove any wrinkles. It will help you secure the napkin onto the surface. Don't use your fingers because you can easily pull the napkins up. So I'm going to go around this whole piece and finish it this way using the decoupage glue, then my napkin, then the saran wrap, and you can blow dry this, or you can let it air dry. And I'm using a fan brush, once it's dry, to apply a coat of decoupage glue over the whole surface. Then I'm going to let this dry, and now's the time when you add your top coat. I am adding a clear, non-yellowing gloss varnish. I am taking that white craft glue and I'm going all around the edges and I'm adding some glitter to the edges, a lot of glitter to the edges. And to go around the center, I'm pouncing the brush. So I don't want to cover the whole surface with glitter, I just want a smattering of it over the surface. So I'm pouncing the glue around, I'm going to put the glitter on, and then I'm going to put this aside to dry. And here is our completed project for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I am now on Twitter if you'd like to follow me over there, Upcycle with Decoupage. I'm on Facebook at Upcycle with Decoupage. And the biggest help to me, guys, is when you do go uh, below this video and click on the subscribe button. That allows me to keep making more videos. And I so appreciate all of your comments. I love to help you out. So if you've got any questions, it is taking me three or four days to get back in touch with you. There's a page on Facebook called Mason Jar Madness and Decoupage. If you'd like to go over and join that page, there are 
so many lovely, helpful people on that page that can help you with any questions. Someone is always on the page, so they can certainly help you a lot faster than I can. In the meantime, I will see you next week with another video. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.